Hello everyone, welcome to Dead to Be. In this episode, we have Alan Chai, Head of Digital Transformation and Innovation at Schlumberger and APP at Microsoft. Uh, we'll let him tell his inspirational story, story to us by himself. And hi, Alan. Thank you for accepting our invite and we are honored to have you here on Dead to Be. So, Thanks. Dead to Be. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Yeah. So, Dead to Be is like, it's about the message you have for the current tech learners and uh, like also asking about your journey and your experience as a tech enthusiast. So uh, let's learn about Alan Chai's inspiring story and how it, he made it happen. So we'd, we'd love to hear about how you get in, got into tech and like the journey. Sure, yeah. So thanks uh, for having me today. I think I feel very honored to be able to reach out to, to the student community, right? So I, I must say, uh, my story is probably slightly not so normal. <laughs> yeah, and uh, or it could be normal to, to a lot of people, right? Uh, so I'm not I, I'm not from a big city guy, or big city boy or, or, or background, right? I, I come from a very small town uh, in a very small country. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I originally come from Malaysia, right? Oh, and Malaysia come from a very tiny town somewhere that if I, even if I mention, nobody knows, right? So, uh, but for for I would say uh, it doesn't stop me, right, from wanting to grow. That doesn't stop me. It doesn't matter whether you come from a little town uh, or, or come from a big big city. What's more important is uh, your aspiration. You want you want to uh, break the uh, the boundary on on what you want to do, right? Okay. So I started from Malaysia, and then I move on and I further my study in Singapore. Yeah, so I spent a pretty long time in Singapore doing my tertiary uh, education, and that's where I graduated from the university as a electrical engineer. Yeah, I'm not oh, even a, great. I'm not even a program. I'm just an electrical engineer and my specialization again is a very odd uh, you probably wouldn't even expect that I'm a satellite communication engineer oh that's actually <laughs> yeah. amazing so yeah. it's very very odd and then from there uh, because of what I, I study satellite and then I and my first job is actually related to satellite communication yeah putting up uh, you know building satellite communication for a fleet of uh, vessels across Asia, right? Yeah. And then from there, it takes me from places to places. Yeah. Wow, that's actually yeah. amazing. Because, uh, you know, starting from a background that's not the, you know, the usual kind. And then, like you mentioned, and you did not have that much of a resource to uh, reach out to people and know about what you can do and how you can do things. And then being at a platform as such is truly amazing. Congratulations to you. Yeah. So I just want to say, you know, uh, what you study form as a foundation for for your for you to learn, right? A foundation for you to know how to learn new things. Okay. So it doesn't matter uh, uh, as best you build your career. Like you see, as I started as a satellite electrical engineer, right? And then now I'm doing IT, I'm doing tech. Uh, it's because I evolve, right? I, I have to evolve. You have to learn to evolve yourself across your career. And from between after after university to now, I've done like uh, various type of roles, right? From operation, engineering, down to business development, down to product development, and now into digital, right? Into digital and innovation. And uh, the key thing is find your passion, right? Find your passion and then develop that passion uh, uh, along the way. Don't don't stop learning. Yeah, that's that's quite amazing. Like, uh, like currently you are the head of digital transformation and innovation, and you, like you mentioned, you have switched through so many roles. So how has your journey been, and how has you like the community has impacted you, and you have uh, impacted the community through the, through your roles? 
Yeah, so uh, in the beginning of my career, as uh, many people will be also able to relate, is that you you're still absorbing, right? You're like a sponge, right? You're learning, you're learning from the others, you're learning from the community, learning from other experts. But then as you reach a certain level of maturity, I say it's time for you to pay back, right? So that's where I believe that when you reach a certain maturity, it's time you share and uh, uh, and uplift others, uh, younger uh, younger that are pop, uh, community members, to the next level, right? So you ex- you learn in the beginning, and then as you grow, you need to remember to give back to the community. Yeah. That's, so that's and for, for my journey um, in in the beginning, you know, I was building my career, and then. As I become more confident and more mature in my in my career, that's time that I I realize that hey, some of this stuff that I'm doing is actually uh, it is it looks normal to me. And uh, initially, I wasn't even in the community because I was just doing my job, right? Yeah. I was just doing what I know best. I'm delivering what I believe is uh, is the right product, is the right uh, material. Until I was uh, been, I received a call from Microsoft and saying that, hey, Alan, what you're doing here is something very different. Can you come and share with the rest of the community? So it took me by surprise because all the while, I didn't realize what I'm doing is is different. <laughs> then until somebody pinpointed me and said, hey, Alan, your your product looks very very different and compared to. Uh, the what we seen out there, right? So, when I started this whole power platform journey, I stick to a, man, a mentor that you know when I build something, I'm gonna build an app, right? I want the app to behave and feel like native apps. Right? Yeah, that was my mentor, and and that's how it, it it pushed me, right, to say, okay, don't accept what the out the box. Uh, Look and feel, okay. So bring your touch, yeah. Bring your touch, and level it up to uh, your your uh, your aspiration, right? So that that's my uh, what I have been doing, and also that's how I've been coaching my, my my people, right? People that I've been training to say, you know, you need to make sure that you set a target in terms of uh, your product delivery. Yeah, that's that's actually amazing when you when you set targets and you put your distinctive approach to things that have been doing normally, uh, happening normally, and then you put a distinctive approach to everything. Then it 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 makes a huge difference to what has been actually happening and to what can actually happen in various different ways and more optimized and efficient ma- manner. It's actually amazing when you realize that fact. So quite uh, inspiring uh, the story already is. So you became a Microsoft MVP and you said that Microsoft reached out to you that you have a different approach. What like what made uh, that uh, Microsoft realize that you had this different uh, and amazing approach about this and how did you get the appreciation and the acknowledgement from Microsoft? So when I got the call from Microsoft, uh, that was back in 2019, yeah. 2019. That's like two years after, or one year after I play with a uh, our platform, right? And I guess they seen more, right? They have seen all their customers and all the other communities work, and uh, what they have seen at the time, our platform was still maturing, still at the uh, infant stage, right? So you have a, a already, but there was already a big group of uh, community building great stuff great functionality but there was nothing that actually uh, looked different <laughs> because my my product come out to be different not just that the feature is there but also it looks it looks like a and any other apps you download from from app store right or google marketplace so it, it looks it looks production ready it looks uh, enterprise ready because that was my my ask when I push a, a app out, I believe in adoption, right? I believe that if your apps uh, cannot attract your audience to use it, and also cannot attract 
your audience to come back and use it, you have failed. Yeah. So yeah. you need to achieve that ability, and to do so, you need to invest some effort in uh, making sure the user experience, the user interface, are uh, uh, put in priority, right? Instead yeah. of uh, functionality. So I always emphasize on UX first. Yeah, making sure your user experience is priority, prioritize over functionality, right? And when you have the kind of mentality, you will realize that your approach of making solutions is very different. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Absolutely true. So uh, that that was uh, the uh, the first uh, first step, yeah, which is making sure that your uh, audience can is, is tempted to come and use it and also come back, right? So that's first. And then second is that a lot of people are telling me, hey, you need to write a guide. No, you need to write a, a user documentation to, to explain to your user how to use your app. For me, my thinking is, if you build an app and you need a documentation to explain where to click and where to, where to touch, you have failed yeah. because your app is too complicated. Right? You <laughs> need, to, need to make it very simple in such a way that it is so intuitive that it would draw your, your audience to go press the button that you want them to press on the screen. Right? Yeah, it's like it's definitely about the ease of user, and it's just about the user that uh, that's in, uh, that we are trying to get get to know, and how they can actually just you know uh, use uh, your product without any extra guidance or documentation. That actually makes sense completely. So, how did you become a power champ? What exactly is being a power champ, and what's the, what is it about? So, because, I I become yeah. a power a power apps champs before. Uh, before MEP, okay. So the Power Apps Champs was actually when my Microsoft uh, reached out to me and said, you did something super different, right? And yeah. like you to share uh, more broadly the experience and, and my approach. And there were there was 24 of us. So this this board behind me, uh, there were, you, you can see maybe it's fuzzy. There's actually 24 baseball cards up there whereby uh, Microsoft uh, made the 24 Power Apps champs into some Pokemon cards that, oh, that that's they so true. I'm not sure uh, So this is uh, the, the Power Apps oh. champs. Oh, that's so, so you can see various uh, community leaders up here. So Keith Watlin, Samit Sunny, Vivek, myself, uh, Eric McKinney, Ken Beer, right? And many more, right? So uh, this yeah. this is special because uh, every one of them has a story, right? Every one of them uh, comes with a certain uh, uh, approach of doing something different and or a story that can impact the community. So these are power at the champs that uh, Microsoft identify that can help. Uh, the community to uh, rise up together, right? Yeah. So my my area is uh, UX. So you have some other guys. Uh, they are super strong with uh, API. Someone like Vivek is super strong with API, and then you have Keith who is super strong with uh, the CDS, and now is Data Flex, right? Okay, that's actually great. And uh, the, the whole, uh, how did you meet Samit Saini? Actually, we had Samit Saini earlier, uh, like, like just before your session. And he, he, he was the person, like he, we asked for a guest suggestion and he was like, I would, would love that uh, Alan Chai comes and shares his story. And it would be amazing for the entire community. Like, how did you meet him and what, what's the story there? So with Summit, Summit is actually, uh, I would say, one generation before me from the okay. Power Apps Chan's uh, uh, side of anger. He was the first gen of Power Apps Chan, the uh, champ. So when I get into Power Platform, um, my first touch was, okay, read up, right? Read up what's out there. And then there was this video, this famous video where Summit Sunny was introduced by Sadia Nadella during yeah. one of the conference right then we we all look at the his his story and that was something that uh really inspiring right it's really inspiring right? inspired a lot of us in in inside somebody in the company 
So at that point in time, uh, I was still trying to build up my community, my internal community. So we have a fairly large uh, uh, base of user. We have a uh, eighty thousand user, right? And today we have about six, five to six thousand active makers yeah, in the in the internal community. But to reach that, it took time, right? So, yeah. so in the beginning, when I saw Summit's uh, video, I was so inspired, and I say to myself, I say, "Where is my Summit in Samoa?" Okay. <laughs> so I post in Yammer and I say, "Where is my Summit? Please stand up, right?" <laughs> so, I I wanted to find uh uh various other you know. A character and persona like Summit in our community and bring them up, right? Bring them up to to be the next great maker, the next champion uh, between the community. And I still, uh, at the time, it's just all about you know uh, how I know him is just through YouTube, through to the video yeah. that I watch, right? So we didn't really, and then we we were supposed to meet up in a. Uh, In Heathrow Airport for lunch, uh, one one of the uh, week we we plan to for me to go down and uh, meet up with him. Unfortunately, <laughs> he was pulled away by uh, Microsoft CEO for lunch with the uh, with the CEO of one of the Italian uh, oil company. So oh. so uh, so that that took precedence over me. So again, it was delayed. So we we actually didn't meet up until two years later when we had a. a A customer advisory board meeting where we happen to mingle and uh, be in the same room. It was really good. Yeah, that's amazing. So, like, what inspired to enter you to enter the tech community? Like, when did you start getting into tech community? Because you said said that you like started with the saddle. Uh, your majors were into satellites, and you were an electrical engineer. So, like, how did you get into this part of the? So I. I get into the tech community with uh, actually with SharePoint. Okay, when SharePoint started around 2007, yeah. So at the time we we had this big initiative in the company where we push you no know, the whole uh, SharePoint platform across the company. And I'm the I'm I'm the kind of person who likes to solve problems, right? So we we push out SharePoint uh, platform at the time. Everybody was new about it, very very new to the platform. Nobody knows how to uh, get the best out of it, right? So I was even myself. I was struggling for six months to understand what is SharePoint, right? <laughs> so and then I I. Couldn't because at the time people are so used to website, right? You want a website that you can interact, you can uh, you know uh, manage your content, you can uh, manage some workflow. Then we struggle or I struggle with SharePoint at the time. Then I told my my boss at the time I wasn't in IT. I told my boss, okay, give me one project, I will knock this out this weekend. Okay. Yeah, I told I told him, okay, give me something that you you have a problem right now. I will go figure it out this weekend. So I kill myself for that weekend. <laughs> go learn everything about SharePoint, and by Monday I have a, a, a content management system based on SharePoint that look completely custom. I basically custom make a a, a SharePoint site uh, that look completely different with JavaScript, with jQuery injected on top. Right, everything was done was learned over a weekend. Yeah. So wow. that was my first step, right? So the first step that I that get myself into the tech uh, industry, uh, coming from electrical engineering to hey, this is now IT, right? Solving problems, like putting my engineer hat, hat on, right? That's that's quite great. Like, well, how do you think that the digital transformation like has evolved, and how do you think that it's going to evolve in the coming times? And like, what's the strategic approach that you think is going to be? Yeah, so that was actually the first step of digitalization, right? Because you are making transforming uh, data points from analog yeah. uh, data points to digital data points. So uh, from that baby step to now is more than ten years now. We we have gone through a long journey of uh, digitalization, but uh, 
my my view is that yes, we have started that quite long, uh, quite early as well, but uh, it's still a long way to go. Yeah. Yeah. Today, a lot of corporations or companies are still not fully digital, right? So today, digital is here and digital is here to stay, and it's going to be uh, even more, right? So uh, we read through throughout the years, we realized that it's not just about the tools; it's about the mindset, the mindset of the people. We need to make sure we have the digital culture in our people. The, the kind of uh, mentality to think that, hey, you don't go back to the analog way of doing things. You need to, whatever you do, keep your mindset to think two steps ahead to say, whatever data point that I'm generating now, I need to make sure that it is useful for the future, right? Yeah. If it's not going to be useful, don't create that new data points. Yeah. So like uh, you have had such global experience, you have to been to four continents and countries and so many cross cultures in it, uh, like the industry. So what's your experience and how it has involved you as an individual? Yeah, so I, I am, I would say I'm quite fortunate and uh, privileged to be able to have a career that is so uh, well mixed and uh, well exposed, <laughs> right? So yeah. four continents, uh, I have worked as far as uh, Asia, as uh, central as uh, Africa, right? I was in Nigeria, and as north as Scotland, and now I'm in Houston, right? And I'm also in in, in the middle of uh, continental Europe, in Paris and London. So that kind of exposure is, uh, I say, is very very rare and hard to come by, right? Yeah. And it, it helps build my uh, my foundation and my view of the world is not constrained to one culture or one country, right? My view to the world is the world, right? Yeah. So uh, that, that, that's why uh, adaptability is, is something super important uh, for, for this kind of career. Not everybody can, uh, it's not everybody cup of tea, right? Because some yeah. people just prefer to have stability, but I sign up to this, uh, this kind of uh, uh, program and I want to see the world, right? I want to not just travel and see the world, I want to live in that culture, right? So having the opportunity to live in particular culture, learn the language and learn, know the people is extremely enriching. Right? And so now, enough, if you look at my family, right, even my, my own kids, uh, my kids were born everywhere, right? <laughs> One, one, one is was born in UK. One was born in US, right? So even in the in the family itself, it's a mini mini United Nation, and uh, and they're used to it now. As in, like every two three years, we we uproot and we, we move somewhere else, right? So and they look forward to it actually, yeah. Yeah, that's actually amazing. You know, it's, it's really thrilling and nice when you get to know the world through different perspectives and being there by being there. So it's quite amazing. So uh, what's the uh, one advice that you have for the coming generations of technologists? What? Can you repeat that? Like, what's the one advice that you would want to like give to the coming technologists in the upcoming? Uh, yeah. I would say, um, it is one one one's uh, advice. I would say, keep make, making sure that while you're building up yourself, don't forget to establish your external uh, connection. Yeah. yeah. So very often we neglect that. Yeah. Very often, as as a student or someone who just starting, you pretty much trying to build around you. You forgot about. You need to build outside your circle yeah. that is super important and it is uh, I would say if I have a chance to rewind the clock I would do that part a bit more yeah uh, in the early stage of my career okay that's great yeah. so uh, we have the small psych round it's just about like one word quest answers for your uh, for these questions it's just about your personal interest etc so yeah so what's the big thing that you think will impact the world next AI. Okay. So which game is your favorite one? Okay. 
Oh, that's great. So, what sort of music do you like the most? Music, mm, uh, jazz. Oh, that's great. So, if you ever want to meet a person for like ten minutes, and who would who would it be? Elon Musk. Oh, that's great. So, which book you read has impacted you the most? Okay, this one is tricky. Yeah. So, <laughs> there's one book uh, called Why We Sleep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Go check it out. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, it's it's important because uh, I find that along the way we sometimes work too hard, and then we realize we we didn't realize that the importance of sleep. Yeah. Perfect. So we'll definitely check it out. So the most inspiring thing that you have done so far, and the adventure that you would want to do next. Oh, um, I like to go to the Arctic. Okay, that's quite interesting adventures, I must say. So thank you so much, Alan Jai, for sharing your story. This was absolutely amazing, and thank you for coming and uh, accepting the invite. It's an honor. And uh, thank you everyone for so much support. And uh, please stay tuned and do watch the episodes from earlier. Thank you so much, Alan, again. And it's been an honor to record this session for you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah.